Welcome back. It's Malsive. Today, wool. There's a very simple farm that can be very friendly to servers as well. So let's get into how this works. We'll show you the redstone, we'll show you the mechanics of it, and then you should be able to go and build your own farms. Let's go see. All right, we're back on our builds world, and we've got ourselves our wool farm set up right over here underneath the iron farm. The iron farm, of course, is a necessary farm that you're going to want to have. The wool farm is really great because I do like the different colors you can get. I like building the farm just in general, but also carpeting is very important uh, to hide lights, to make uh, sort of mob-proof areas. There's a lot of things you can do with wool, and this is a very simple way to do it while not being a tax or a big load on a server if you do play with other people. And it's also nice to build it this way just for yourself as well. A couple of things to note. Sheep cannot be dyed unless they have hair. This one's pretty efficient, pretty fast. Uh, there's a good chance you'll never see them with wool or with uh, their fur on them. Um, <laughs> so dye them before you get them in place. Also, uh, some wheat and a lead. If you put the wheat in your offhand, you can use the lead and then place blocks without the sheep ever losing focus on you. So this is how I like to put them in their cells. So get some wheat in your offhand and get a lead in your main hand. And then you can just use your swap key when you don't want them to focus on you anymore to try to push them into their little cells. So let's look at the beginning, or the, the to start, let's look at the middle portion of it here, these three blocks wide. Um, the end of it is going to be sort of an X of dirt blocks. Specifically, though, we want these to be grass blocks. And that's because the grass block the sheep sit on, they're going to eat this grass to get their wool back. That can be, the grass can spread from below it here, from above it here, here, or even down here. Now that one has an observer on it, so that's going to stay dirt. But in between the observers, there is grass to keep this one grassed, and this will also spread. So at any given time, we've got four different blocks that can regrass this. Um, unless we had another one out here, now there's five. So five blocks, all pointing to this one to keep it grassed. We'll make sure that when your sheep wants to eat, it is available. That's important. They don't get their wool back unless they have grass to eat. I take the, if I take the roof off real quick, they'll start to bounce. This can slow down your farm, which is why I have the, the ceiling on. And you can really use any block. You could use stone, you could use obsidian, I, it, you could use wool. But anything that would keep them from jumping up and down. You could even carpet this because this trapdoor is on the inside of this block here. Speaking of being on the inside, if we look at the hitboxes, the hitbox of the sheep, if we notice, is just on the other side. We've got this leaf block here, and then it's here. So they actually are being pushed to this middle block, and both of them are. And the reason for that are these trapdoors on the end. Trapdoor being on the inside, at the top and the bottom, uh, just for safety's sake, you could remove the bottom ones if you wanted. Same thing with the fence. The fence uh, keeps them away from each other. We could add one on the bottom, but it's not necessary, so we just kind of left it alone. But if you put one in there, it won't impact this farm at all. Once these are built like this, the three um, sets of those X's of grass, you can put your fence up top, and your trapdoor walls, and then you just have to kind of lead them up here with your wheat and a lead, push them into place and let them drop in. Dye them ahead of time. Now you'll notice on the front side, we've got glass, that's um, glass and leaves on the back. That lets these stay grass. The, if we were to do something else, um, that would turn these into dirt and that would not help us at all because we want this to regenerate down here. Every under every sheep will also be an observer pointing at the grass block. So the face of it, the little smiley face, touches this. So when that block changes, whether when the grass grows back or when the sheep eats it, then that will um, trigger this redstone line. And all we're really concerned with is the orange part here that just comes up and over. And when it comes over, it gets behind this dispenser with the shears. One click of the shears is enough to shear both sheep for one durability. Um, and that's, that's why we wanted them pushed onto this middle block because they're just one pixel over into this block. They can both be sheared at all times. That's why pushing them over with the trap doors is important. Keeping them separated with the fence keeps them right in the right position to eat this grass block, but be cut from the middle. Also 
with this in the middle, they don't collide with each other. Their, their boxes, their hit boxes never touch each other. And that is what keeps lag down, makes this much more server friendly. And of course, uh, uh, even on a single player world, that can be helpful. On the back side, in order to get to this dispenser, we put a stair here so I can still get here and it leaves us a nice smooth wall along the back. We don't want any lips or ledges. You could, so I've seen people put hoppers up top to feed the dispenser with more of these. This is a lot. This is a lot. 238 for each one, and there's nine of them. So you're looking at 2,000 roughly, roughly 2,000 uses per um, dispenser. That's a lot. Having this stair here, you can actually get to it and refill it as you need to. If you were to use that hopper to fill it with a chest on top, that's okay, but you're going to have a little lip because the hopper is sort of like a, a cone or a funnel, an upside down triangle or pyramid, so that the wool could pop off and land on top, and then it wouldn't be picked up by the collection system. Speaking of the collection system, it's just a hopper minecart here, and the track goes underneath. I did light up a little bit by putting a lever up here. That's just to keep the momentum going. And you can add as many of these as you'd like. You could make all of this powered rails if you'd like. This one can never be powered. We'll explain that when we get to that end over here. Now, you could just have it so that the minecart would bounce back and forth the whole time. That would just be a block over here, and you'd power it so that this rail would be powered constantly. Or if that whole line was powered, this lever would be powering it, and that would be fine. But I like to have this only run occasionally. So what'll happen is anytime that the dispenser fires off, we take it off the end and just take that to a full delayed repeater. And what that allows is once this clicks, the wool might pop up and then have to fall down. So having this delay just lets them settle for a quick second before this races out and collects all the wool. Now, once it's uh, in the hopper minecart, you could just come down here and open the minecart and pull this out. The problem being, we have five slots in the hopper, and if you were to have more than five colors, it wouldn't be picking them up. And I would recommend making this only about eight long. There's 16 colors of sheep. You could do them you know, side by side, face to face, um, and have two different uh, lines. You could mirror this setup and have this middle piece, or this, I'm sorry, these two be the middle, and then this down here, if we were to place this, this is where the next set of sheep would stand. And then you would have this side where the dispensers and observers would be. And then you could have another line running right along here that would be parallel to this one and could actually feed into the same exact chest or uh, gathering place that you would have at the end here. But yeah, I like this to only go off when these fire. So from the end of the line, so if I were to take and, and add more of these, like say I were to copy this exact section, because you can do this, this is very tileable. Just add another three, add another three, add another three. Um, this would just be pushed out to the end. And then anytime one of these clicks um, or the, is updated, this will pulse this line and the dispenser fires off and you get that nice click and the wool gets sheared. And this would kind of just go one, two, three. So down, up, down, and then we'd go down, up, down on the next one, but they would all connect. So anytime any of these observers would fire, all of them would click the shears just so that if a sheep were to get past and not, um, not trigger it for some bizarre reason, lag on the, uh, in the game, on the server, um, you'd get another you know, flash. This will go frequently with more sheep, but not constantly. So that's, that's the reason why I have this, this set up on the end. Obviously, you could just have this always be powered and the minecart would always run. At the end, uh, you could just have this hopper feed into a chest and then a few would be pulled out every time. And if it was continually going back and forth, it would empty. It would keep up. You could even run this block back one and have two pieces of railing up top. And then there'd be two hoppers pulling wool out of the hopper minecart. I like to actually have a system that will drain it. So when this comes up and wool goes into this hopper, we've got a small redstone circuit. The comparator is going to see what's in here and output a signal. So anytime something's in there, this will light up, which because it's pointing into this block, this gets powered, which will turn off this redstone torch. And that's what's giving power right now 
because of this repeater to this rail here. So in essence, when this has anything in it, this powers and turns off the rail, putting the brakes on your hopper minecart. So it would come up and as it's emptying, it will wait until it's fully empty and then it will go back about its business. Uh, this can be really handy if you want to make sure you're keeping up on all of it. You don't want to have your hopper minecart stay full. And again, you could build just the mirror image of this if you had another one coming this way. And then instead, this hopper system, as you can see, would sort of fit in that direction. And you could put the other one there and just build all the same, you know, the same redstone. And then this would be fed by two different lines in two different sides where you'd have a bunch of different colors. Uh, there's 16 colors. That's why I recommend having eight and eight, eight on each side. That way you don't have uh, these giant redstone lines because there is a limitation as to how far redstone can go without having it repeated um, or the signal boosted. The other thing you can do is put a ceiling on it so they don't jump up and down. Whether that's out of leaves or glass on the sides for the walls, you put any block on top. I do kind of like to see what's going on in there. The leaves are a natural look, so both work really well and leave the grass alone. But this is a simple, easy way to make a wool farm. And this hasn't been running very long, and we've already got quite a bit in the way of the cyan and magenta wool. And then if you have your iron farm, like this one up here, there's actually two of them set up. Um, you will have all the iron you'll ever need to fill these dispensers. Shears are very, very cheap. And especially when you're looking at 238 durability for two iron, that's a lot of wool blocks for very little iron. Only a couple of hoppers over here, the rails, and a few redstone components, and you could have a setup like this pretty easily. Um, and it's a nice setup. I like this. Not overly obtrusive. You could build a farm or a barn around this quite easily. You know, if this was your 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 uh, sort of you know ground area, this is where you would walk. You could see your sheep in here. You could say hello. You know, whatever it may be. Um, these you want to stay with grass. You could put uh, some say trap doors that are you know up in front of it so that it wouldn't look you know as grassy you know just to kind of give it a little bit uh, more of a nice uh, visual but decorate this however you want you could bury this underground somewhere uh, and then have this feed into a dropper that shoots it into a water stream that would pump it up to the surface there's a lot of things you can do with this system you could use the unloader like it is and then having this hopper face into you know, a dropper pointing off, throw it into a water stream and then have it sorted by color. So you'd have a bunch of different chests. There's a lot of ways you can go with this, but this is just a really basic setup with a little bit of redstone. Again, you could take the redstone out and just have two hoppers that feed into a double chest. Um, you could have this running constantly by just powering this block over here. There's a lot of different ways you can do it, but this is a nice, simple, clean way. Uh, and the middle part again is very tileable. But enjoy this, use this. Let me know uh, if you found any cool, neat uh, tricks down in the comment section below. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell button. We generally only get one video a week, so you're not going to get overloaded with spam. Uh, but you'll know when we get some new videos up, and then you can see some of the ideas that we get here in the Mels of Builds channel. I appreciate you so much for coming by. Have a great day.